Welcome to Ellen and News. I'm Carolyn Day Pruitt. G and Sam are out today. I heard they're in their No Girls Allowed treehouse behind the studio. On this week's show, we've got your local headlines, and Dr. Sandy will be talking about stress in this week's Off the Charts. We'll be back after this. Breeze in and get the best lunch in town. Breeze in is a family-owned business that specializes in top-notch service and fried chicken. Come enjoy Breeze in's original finest fried chicken. Like a little spice? Ask for our Virginia Heat chicken. We have everything from barbecue to Philly cheesesteaks on our made-to-order menu. Thirsty? Walk into our beer cave and enjoy the coldest beer in town, including a wide variety of local craft beers and wines. Enjoy a selection of local Virginia products. Come experience what puts the Breeze in Breeze in. Whether it's rainy diamonds or sapphire skies, add a little sparkle to your day with Petersburg Jewelers. Welcome back to Ellen and News. Let's take a look at your local news headlines. A suspect has been identified in the shooting death of 18-year-old Dinwiddie resident Rashad James. Prince George police have issued warrants for 18-year-old Xavier Winfield of Sutherland for aggravated malicious wounding, reckless handling of a firearm, and brandishing of a firearm. In the early hours of July 20th, PGPD were called to Blair Court in the county's Branchester Lakes neighborhood where they discovered James in the street with a gunshot wound. EMS personnel pronounced James deceased at the scene. Police are asking that if you have any information on the whereabouts of suspect Xavier Winfield that you contact them at 804-733-2773 or submit your tip to Crime Solvers at 804-733-2777. On Tuesday evening, Hopewell City Council held a special meeting to hear from the Robert Bob Group, who have been selected to help dig the city out of its ongoing financial issues. Robert Bob was chosen after City Manager Dr. Concetta Manker issued an emergency RFP, which was then vetted by a group unconnected to the city. Three representatives of the Robert Bob Group were present at the meeting, including Robert Bob himself. During that presentation, which introduced the group to council members and the public, and outlined some of the work the group has done, Bob and his associates gave an overview of the work to be done and the process that would be followed. A theme that occurred throughout the presentation, as well as the question portion of the meeting, was boots on the ground. All three, groups associ- all three group associates emphasized that the group would not be coming into the city to assess the situation, but would be active on the ground in Hopewell, resolving issues and taking the necessary actions to put Hopewell back into financial shape. One key focus of the cleanup effort is to correct the systems and data issues that plague Munis, the city's financial system. In addition to fixing the problems of the past 10 years, Robert Bob will also assist Hopewell in creating policies and procedures that, if followed, will ensure that the city avoids the same financial records issues in the future. The group will begin work on Wednesday, August 16th. The council unanimously approved $988,680 taken from ARPA funds to pay for the Bob Group's work. The Colonial Heights Police Department is asking for the public's help in identifying the suspect seen on your screen. This unidentified person, along with another suspect who has been identified, are wanted for the vandalism of Colonial Heights public school vehicles in the 2600 block of Woodlawn Avenue near Lakeview Elementary School. The vandalism, which occurred sometime between 5 p.m. of July 24th and 7 a.m. of the following day, totaled to approximately $4,500 worth of damages. If you can help solve this crime, call Crime Solvers at 804-748-0660 or use the P3 Tips mobile app or website to submit your tip. Crime Solvers guarantees that you will remain anonymous and that you could receive a cash reward up to $5,000. The Small and Rural Law Enforcement Executives Association, or SIRLIA, an annual conference took place earlier this week at the Petersburg Public Library from Monday through Wednesday, featuring prominent leaders and renowned speakers from across the country who addressed critical issues in law enforcement. On Tuesday, August 1st, the Director of the Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, delivered the opening keynote address, during which he stated that the most prominent terrorism-related threat facing the nation is individuals radicalized based on hate, anti-government sentiment, conspiracy theories, or personal grievances. Mayorkas stated that the focus of domestic terrorists is not highly visible targets such as the attacks of 9-11, but rather highly convenient targets like schools, houses of worship, grocery stores, and other places where communities gather in, quote, every town everywhere. He stated that we live in a world where any locality can be a target. 
Mayorka said that information sharing with smaller local law enforcement agencies with federal fusion centers and full integration with the DHS information network is the solution being pushed forward in the months ahead because the threat landscape has shifted from urban to rural and small communities where nearly 18,000 law enforcement agencies reside. The Virginia Department of Health has issued a warning to residents that tick-borne illnesses are on the rise across the Commonwealth. Tick-borne illnesses that can occur in Virginia include Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and tularemia. The Crater Health District is urging the public to use precautionary measures to guard against tick bites. They recommend using insect repellent while outdoors, wearing long pants and shoes with socks when outdoors, and tucking the pants legs into the shoes or socks, wearing light-colored clothing so that ticks are easy to spot, and tucking in your shirt. When outdoor activity is done, conduct a thorough search for ticks and shower thoroughly with soap as soon as possible. Remember, the longer a tick is attached to your skin, the higher the risk for transmission of any diseases. The city of Petersburg has opened its comfort station for the remainder of the summer. On Friday, July 28th, the city made the announcement as the area, and indeed much of the country, suffered extreme temps and humidity. Those seeking relief from the heat can find cool water and air conditioning at the city's transit center located at 100 West Washington Street. The comfort station is open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Prince George County will host its annual Back to School Fair on Thursday, August 10th. The fair will be a drive through event and take place at Prince George High School. Families will be able to drive through the school's bus loop to receive a backpack containing school supplies as well as helpful information for parents and students. If you would like to donate supplies for, to the back, for the Back to School Fair, you can drop them off at the school board office, at any of the district schools, or at the Prince George Farmers Market through Monday, August 7th. The drive through will open at 4 p.m. on the 10th, and the event ends at 7 p.m. Residents of Petersburg now have a new option for keeping up with what's happening in the city. The Petersburg Police Department has launched a mobile app. The app allows residents to stay up to date on department activities, complete forms, and, perhaps most importantly, be alerted to safety notifications in real time. You can download the app by searching for Petersburg PD in the App Store or Google Play Store, or you can scan the QR code on your screen. Residents in the southern portion of the city of Petersburg may soon notice increased Dominion Energy presence in the area. The power company notified residents in the area that a fiber installation project is underway in the area beginning at the substation just east of Interstate 95 along a nine-mile corridor of power lines that cuts across Crater Road through the Battlefield Park and Walnut Hill neighborhoods and out towards Dinwiddie County. Dominion Energy crews will be making initial environmental surveys for the project beginning this summer, and they anticipate beginning the fiber installation in spring of next year. Dominion tells residents to expect to see Dominion Energy workers on foot and in vehicles assessing rights of way in order to complete their work. The company does not expect any interruptions to electrical service with this project. That's it for this week's LNN News headlines. We'll be back in a moment. When it was Seth's turn to pay for gas on the annual boys trip, he had to act fast to avoid a very awkward car ride. Luckily, Seth was able to transfer the cash with his phone. In that very moment, we were the bank of Seth. BSB, the bank of you. Welcome back to Ellen and News. Thank you again to our viewers for tuning into the show. If you'd like to be notified when our new videos drop, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. Now we go to Dr. Sandy, who is going to talk about the impact of stress in our lives and give us some tips on how to handle it. Hello, Dr. Sandy from Chester Family Chiropractic Center, and today we're going to talk about stress. Um, I've been having probably the most stressful time in my life in the last couple of weeks and it's important that I find ways to deal with it so that it doesn't affect my health. Stress is one of the major causes of disease, discomfort, disarray, all kinds of disses in your life and we don't want that. So let's talk about how to handle stress. Stress is always going to be there. There's no way to eliminate it completely. Stress is actually a good thing. Stress is designed to get you to act, to do. You know, you see somebody, they're stuck under a car and it's amazing how you're able to lift the car off of them like Superman. It's the chemicals in your body that have pumped themselves up in order to get you able to behave like Superman in that stressful situation. 
a tiger is chasing you and you can actually run away from him because of that adrenaline that's pumping and everything else. But unfortunately for most Americans today, we have that tiger chasing us all the time. And those same chemicals that are designed to give you that little instant burst of strength and ability pumping all the time will end up causing an increase in all kinds of other problems like high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, and physical ailments as well. So what do we do about stress? The number one thing that you can do is to just reprogram your mind to think about the stress and what it really is. If you think about every single thing you've ever worried about, I think you'll be surprised to realize that most of those things never actually happened. We call this the 80-10-10 rule. 80% 80 of the things you worry about never happen. 10% actually do happen, but they're not nearly as bad as you work them up to be. And then the other 10%, well, that's life. And there's only so much that you control. You control what you can, and you let go what you have to. One of the best ways of relieving stress is exercise and physical motion. Go for a run, go dancing, go kickboxing. That's one of my favorite things. When I hear that slap on the paddle, it just melts the stress away. Breathing, take a deep breath. Take a moment to just settle yourself. Most people make some of their biggest decisions when they're stressed. And as a result, those are the decisions they often regret. Take that moment to take a breath and just settle yourself before you act, before you make that decision. <sighs> Life is good. Enjoy it. Yes, you can still get haircuts, colors, highlights, waxing services, everything that's going to make you look great right here at the Apothic Company. Swader, Central Virginia's premier sports park. Corporate events, parties, date night, or just a family outing. At Swader's, it's always playtime. So here at Titan Auto & Tire, we're a full care automotive repair center, full maintenance items anywhere from an oil change, state inspection, and also full engine replacement. Titan Auto is different because of our customer service mainly. I mean, we have some of the best trained and qualified techs in the area. Our three main focuses are customer safety, customer service, and community. Knowing that uh, you're going to put them first and it's not about the dollar. That's it for this week's show. We appreciate all of our viewers and thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, a big thank you to all of our sponsors, especially Dunlop House, for making this show possible. We'll see you again next Friday. Thanks for watching LNN, news by the people, for the people.